Hello and welcome back to CHY for You, History of the West and the World at Discovery Academy. My name is Arseny Krichever, and today we will begin the course by looking at course requirements, the units, material we'll be looking at, uh, as well as the big themes of the course. Uh, if you take a look at the slide, it depicts a famous painting which shows uh, the mortal woman Europe, Europa, being carried across the sea uh, on the back of a bull. Actually, it's the god Zeus. And it depicts the Greek myth of how Europe as a continent, as a place, was uh, created. In this course, we're going to be looking at history. History of Europe, history of the West as a concept, uh, and history of interactions between the West and the world. Let's start with some definitions just to, uh, just to get our bearings. What is history? History is not just a chronological description of events. It is not a simple timeline that tells us when each event occurred, when this person was born, when this person died. That is not history. That is chronology. History is about more than just dry facts, the dates, the names, the places. History is about understanding and interpreting why things happened the way they did. We might not always understand and interpret them perfectly and there's a lot of disagreements between historians when we do interpret but that's what makes history so interesting so contested this course is designed to follow and supplement grade 11 course on ancient and medieval history it deals with a very uh, interesting and very fast-paced time in human history, perhaps the fastest paced progress in human history, known as modernity. And modernity is a very loaded term, but I like this definition. As a movement from a medieval society, from a very traditional society, towards a society that is categorized by secularization, mass politics, industrialization, stable institutions, and surveillance. Secularization means society where religion no longer plays a dominant role. Mass politics, a society in which most people have some political power or some or an ability to make political decisions. Industrialization, a society, a world dominated by industry, by machinery, by production. Stable institutions, I'm talking about things like governments, parliaments, police, education. They are institutions, amongst others, that define our society. And surveillance, meaning that modern society is, in modern society, people are more and more observed, whether by their governments, by corporations, or by simply other people. So, one of the big themes of the course is going to be how do we how did we get here? How did this modernity thing develop? Another important question to consider is what is the West? How do we define the West? West of what exactly? Well, Europeans traditionally defined it as being West. They traditionally defined the West as being West of Jerusalem. I'll explain why later on. To them, everything west of that was considered the West. But what did they really mean? Well, what they really meant was Europe. And as much as we can be tempted to do so, Europe is not a homogenous place. It's a large continent. There are over 87 native European ethnic groups. That's a lot of different ethnicities. And there's over 50 living European languages that people speak even today. In earlier times, there were many, many more languages that people used to speak. And up until very recently, really up until the last 30, 40 years, Europe could not 
be spoken of as a single place or single population. It was a patchwork of countries with very different ideologies, different ethnicities, languages, customs, governments. So we have to be careful by what, when we say the West. And of course, in more recent centuries, the West doesn't just mean Europe. It also means North and South America. It even means Australia and New Zealand. Since 20th century, Japan also started to fit in into the Western model as well. So when we talk about the West and the world, it is a very loaded term. In fact, this term uh, is very ethnocentric. And what is ethnocentric? It is this idea that one's ethnicity or one's, uh, the group to which a person belongs is at the center of the world. It is the most important group in the world and everything is defined by how your group to which you belong relates to all the other groups. So when we speak of the West and the world, we are deliberately dividing the world into the West and everyone who is not the West. And that's very ethnocentric. That's not a good thing. That is actually a fairly negative connotation, which makes the name of this course a little problematic. Nonetheless, uh, we can't deny that so much of human progress, whether in science, art, literature, technology, uh, cultural development, happened in Europe uh, in the last uh, five, six hundred years. I'd like you to consider these questions. Pause the lecture. Try to answer them. Ready? Pause. Okay. Hopefully, you were able to come up with some answers to these questions. So, who creates history and why? Who gets ignored in history and why? Why is history so often a subject of political and cultural debate? And what are the ways in which we learn history and why is that a problem? So who creates history and why? Well, there used to be a famous definition that said the victors write the textbooks. In other words, the people who won, who conquered other people, they get to write the textbooks. The people who got conquered, well, they don't get to write the textbooks. They don't get to participate in history. And people have created history not just to understand the past, although that's part of it, but also to shape the future. Famous writer George Orwell said that he who controls the past controls the future. So who gets ignored in history and why? Well, throughout much of, uh, throughout much of our existence, history tended to ignore people who were in some ways oppressed, who didn't have the power in society to change things for the better, change things better for themselves. So, for example, throughout much of human history, women were ignored in history. Oppressed people like slaves and servants were ignored in history. Workers uh, and other uh, minorities, whether ethnic, sexual, or religious minorities. And that is a problem, and that is one of the reasons why history is so often a subject of political and cultural debate. How do we define history? How do we treat people who were ignored in history and now want uh, and now want to be heard? That's a big part in why history is often so politicized. And also, of course, countries use past history to uh, to justify conflicts quite often. What are the different ways in which we learn history? Well, you're learning it online, at a school, so you're learning history at a school, online, you're learning it from a teacher, you're learning it from a textbook, you're learning it from PowerPoint slides or books, 
But that's not necessarily the only way to learn history. And the problem with that is that you're only getting one version of history. So I'm going to try throughout this course to give you many differing, as many different uh, interpretations as I can. So I don't want to, I don't want to present you with only one way. This is how history happened. No debate. No. I want you to understand that there are multiple ways of interpreting history. So let's take a look at the course outline. What we'll be doing throughout the course. We're going to start with Renaissance, which is roughly designed. Uh, defined as being from 14th to 16th century, common era. This is a very famous uh, sculpture by great uh, Renaissance sculptor Michelangelo. After Renaissance, we're going to move on to Reformation, a very tumultuous era uh, in European history. Uh, wars, uh, plague, uh, famine, uh, religious uh, religious persecution. After which, we're going to move on to scientific revolution and enlightenment, taking place from 16th to 18th centuries. After which, we're going to look at the glorious era of kings and queens, of monarchs. After which, we're going to look at the Age of Revolutions and uh, the traumatic and very dramatic events in European history. We're going to conclude the course by looking at industrialism, the birth of the modern state and modern society, 19th and 20th centuries. Because this is a blended learning course, we will not be doing the group timeline assignments. Instead, it will be an individual assignment. You will also complete several individual presentations on the country of your choice. There will also be an essay and poster assignment. And because this is a blended course, uh, we will not be doing the Enlightenment Salon or ROM uh, Royal Ontario Museum class trip. There will also be homework evaluations, unit tests, and a final exam. Also, please uh, take note of these important links. You should already have them uh, in the introductory email that you received from this course. This is the link for the class textbook. Uh, it's a very good, very general uh, wiki style textbook. It's very accessible. And the class website is where you will be able to find uh, most of the class materials. Uh, in the next lecture, we will actually look at the uh, we will actually look at the course material course materials and what Europe as a place was like before the start 